Today, the Australian Defence Force is rightly held to account for allegations of grave misconduct by some members of our Special Forces community on operations in Afghanistan. In 2020, the Chief of the Defence Force, General Angus Campbell, delivered a once unthinkable mea culpa on behalf of our Defence Forces. His report details credible information regarding deeply disturbing allegations of unlawful killings by some. To the people of Afghanistan, on behalf of the Australian Defence Force, I sincerely and unreservedly apologise. Campbell's tough language was backed by his announcement of some immediate actions that were supposed to signal a change in culture, including by moving to revoke the meritorious unit citation for special operations soldiers who served in Afghanistan between 2007 and 2013. But amid outrage from veterans groups, he was overruled by the then Defence Minister. I've taken a decision today because I believe that we should recognise the vast majority of those 3,000 individuals who have done remarkable work in our country's name. The debate about the right way to deal with the legacy of Afghanistan has continued in the wake of the release of the Burton Inquiry. There is also the ongoing Royal Commission into veteran suicides and most recently the defamation judgment that shocked so many in Australia regarding Ben Robert Smith. Controversially, the Burton report absolved the line of command of responsibility, saying there was no evidence that the top brass had knowledge of war crimes or that they showed a reckless indifference to them. Though the defence chief did say the fact they were unaware or deliberately kept unaware did not relieve commanders of moral responsibility. But for independent Senator Jackie Lambie, that's not enough. Our senior commanders got a free pass while our diggers were thrown under the bus. And when we do not have a military that is functioning because our own hierarchy will not look after their own men and women, then I'll tell you what we've got, we have some terrible trouble going on in our military. Today, Senator Lambie escalated the fight. She revealed she's a signatory, along with lawyer and veteran Glenn Kolomitz, to a complaint known as an Article 15 communication to the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, asking him to investigate Australian command responsibility for alleged war crimes by Australian forces in Afghanistan. If there is a massive incident that happens, you will know. And if you don't know, then I have to be honest with you, Laura, you should not be a leader in our military. Australia's long war in Afghanistan was fought by a relatively small group of elite Special Forces soldiers from the SAS and commandos who do operate more autonomously than regular armed forces. They fought this war on the cheap using a handful of Special Forces over and over and over and I think the Australian people expect generals and ministers in particular who sent those men to war to face up, stand up and take responsibility. And that's where I agree with Jackie Lambie 100%. I commend what she's trying to achieve. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, referral to an international court is necessary just now when the Australian court system is going to hear criminal charges on the basis of these allegations and get to the truth. The allegations which are at the heart of this are very serious and very grave. But through the recommendations of the Burriton Report, our government will ensure that we make this right. The Senate declined to let Senator Lambie table her letter to the ICC without senators seeing what it contained first. The ICC gets its major referrals from state actors or from the UN Security Council, though it does receive and consider Article 15 communications like the one Senator Lambie has sent. It's a challenge. It's, um, it's, a, it's a bit of a battle to get, get one up. Um, at the end of the day, though, the, um, refer the, the um, communication to the, to the ICC prosecutor um, is just one part of our objective. The other part is to prompt the Australian government to, to look at this, to step up. The letter quotes extensively from official public sources like the Burton Report and Senator Lambie's recent sparring with General Campbell in Senate estimates hearings where she grilled the general about letters that were sent to some commanding officers over whether awards and honours they had been given were appropriate. And have any of these service personnel that have received those letters been found guilty of a crime that would warrant the removal of the awards in question? 
Uh, Senator, your question misunderstands command accountability. It is distinct and separate from criminal responsibility, and it is not a criminal process or a, uh, a, um, an indication of criminal liability, but rather a commander's accountability for the performance of their command. And hence it is undertaken under administrative arrangements. The ICC website says it has received around 12,000 such communications about war crimes from around the world, which gives you a reasonable assessment of whether it may be able to act on this one, though the minister appears to be taking it seriously. I will be meeting Senator Lambie tomorrow. The Defence Minister says he has received recommendations from General Campbell about command responsibility in Afghanistan and is considering the government's response. The first soldier to be charged over the allegations was arrested in the southern highlands of New South Wales in March. A Royal Commission into Veteran Suicides is yet to release its final report. Some hope it may shed some light on how the decision to go to war was made and what advice generals gave politicians. This is a part of the problem with the suicides that feeds into it, is the accountability of our leadership in our military. I think we do need to get to the truth of why decisions were made, what choices government had before it and why they made the decisions they made. You can find a statement from the Defence Force on our website and if you're a veteran or serving member and you and your family need help, you can call the organisation Open Arms on 1800 011 046.